All right, uh, Faith, are you, there she is, okay. Happy Sabbath. Sabbath. Um, So my story's different, and some of you might be tempted not to believe it, but as real as I'm standing here, it happened. And I want you guys to be blessed with what happened to me. On August 17th, 2019, I was driving home from Michigan. I had stayed in a cabin with my sister and my niece. Ron and Haley were with the Pathfinders in Wisconsin. As I started to drive home, I started to feel very nauseous. I was really upset to my stomach. I remember praying on the way home and listening to Christian music. By Saturday evening, I was really achy and feeling like I just wanted to climb in bed. Cheyenne, my daughter, offered to take Addie for the night so I could get some rest. Well, Sunday was awful. I thought I had the worst stomach flu that I could even imagine. I started to run a fever. Each time I took my temperature, I would take it in the morning, I would take it at night, it would get higher. It started out at 99.9, then it went up to 100.1. By Tuesday, it was 101. By, no, by Monday, Monday it was 101. By Tuesday morning, I was almost at 103. I called Ron at work. I said, this flu should be better, but I'm worse than it when it started. We discussed options. Should I go to the doctors, urgent care, or to the ER? Well, as a nurse, I did not want to go to the ER. <laughs> you don't go to the ER unless it's truly necessary. <laughs> But thank the Lord that I kneeled and prayed. And I asked God, what should I do? When I finished praying, I told Ron, I'm going to the ER. He said, are you sure? It's a $350 deductible. (laughs) (laughs) I took Addie, and I headed to the ER. This was Tuesday morning. They ran a lot of tests, and they sent me home with some pill form of an antibiotic. One of the tests they drew was called a set of blood cultures. They drew one in the left arm and they drew one in the right arm. This tests for bacteria in your bloodstream. I took a pill Tuesday morning and Wednesday morning I took another one. Right after I took the pill, I received a call from the ER. It said, you need to come back right now. Your blood cultures are positive. This meant that I had bacteria in my bloodstream. I was scared. Having bacteria in your bloodstream is very serious. That infected blood was running all the way through my heart, my kidneys, my brain, and my lungs. Everywhere that blood went, it could cause serious problem. I sent a text to at least two church members requesting prayers. I said, please pray for me. Ask everybody you know to pray for me. I called Ron. I said, I'm going to the hospital, and I think I'm going to get admitted. This was very stressful for us. We were trying to figure out who's going to care for an active four-year-old girl, who's going to pick Haley up from school. It was the first week of school. Your lives are so busy, and then one of you gets yanked from it. Panic sets in to try to figure out you're going to cover things. I needed IV antibiotics to fight this infection. I did what anybody else would do at this time. I Googled the Internet. (laughs) That's what you do when something's wrong. If I didn't get IV antibiotics fast, I could go septic, and it held a high risk of death. I knew more than anything else right now, I needed God's healing. I was admitted to Kettering on Wednesday morning. Now, I prayed as much as I could. Ron had to leave me to take care of the girls. He had work, he had meetings. Thursday night came. The nurses and the hospital staff were very kind to me and I feel blessed. Now several people came by to visit me, and I am gonna mention names. Pastor Baldwin came and saw me. (laughs) He came and saw me at my worst. I had my glasses on, my hair was up in a bun, and I had no makeup on. (laughs) But I am grateful for the prayers, I'm grateful for flowers, and I'm grateful for the visits. Now I tried to be cheerful, and I tried to be pleasant. I wanted to show God as much as I could. Plus, I work at that hospital, and the last thing I wanted to do is write something nasty about me in my chart. (laughs) It can be hard to be in the hospital, isolated from your family. 
Night came and everybody left. The night nurse came in and she told me in passing, they found Simonella in your stool. And then she left. I started Googling the internet. <laughs> My anxiety level was super high. My mind was racing. If Simonella was in my stool and my colon, then that's what was running around in my bloodstream. I had food poisoning, and now it was running free in my blood. Everything that I read on the internet put me in a frozen state of fear. My heart was pounding. This can create pockets of pus and throw them on a heart valve, your spine, your kidneys. Death possible, it said. Septic, shock six to eight weeks of IV antibiotics. I call Ron twice after 10 o'clock crying. He said to me, are you on your phone? Are you Googling? <laughs> Put it down, he said. Put your phone down and pray. That's the only place to go. So there he was, stressed out, tired, exhausted, and trying to be me, caring for two girls. I got off the phone. I felt the deepest darkness settle over me. Thoughts were coming hard and fast. You could die in here. You could be sick for a very long time. I started to pray. Now some of this prayer was out loud and some of it was in my mind. But I pleaded with God as I never have before in my whole life. I was crying out to him. I said, God, Please lift this darkness and this fear and bring me your peace and your healing. Let me feel your presence so that I know you're here. Because if you're here, everything will be okay. This lasted for a very long time. Maybe an hour, maybe longer. Not one bit of peace came. I started repeating scriptures. Nothing brought relief. All I could feel was total dread and fear. I remember saying, God, why are you ignoring me? You love those who love you, and you know that I love you. I am praying that in this time of sickness and fear, I pray that he would give me an experience with him that was beyond anything that I've ever experienced. I pray that he would use this time to truly bring me into his presence. Now, I can't remember everything that I said while I was praying, but I do know this. I pressed harder, and even though I didn't hear him speak to me, I continued to pray. I refused to give up. I refused to back down, and I refused to stop praying. I knew there was one God one healer, and he's the one that I needed to press my situation with. This ugly feeling continued, and it was awful. I wanted it gone. I was desperate for God and his peace. Now, what happened next is not easy to describe. My eyes were closed, and I was still praying. I thought maybe I was dreaming, but I was hearing the noises from my IV pump go off. I saw a window open up in my mind, a large space. I felt a presence in that room. I couldn't see the face, but I knew that I wasn't alone in that room. I knew it was God. I was totally terrified, as you can imagine, but I felt like I was being given an opportunity to press my case before him, and I asked him. Can you imagine what, what would be the first thing you'd say to God? I said, why are you ignoring me? Why didn't you give me any peace when I needed it so badly? At first, nothing was said. I started to see photographs put in front of my face. I said, what are these? No answer. Every photograph in color that was put in front of me was a scene of my life. I didn't need an explanation. I knew the meaning of each picture. It was something I had said, something that I had done. Now, I will tell you that one of the photographs had a scene, and I thought to myself, I didn't even say anything. 
I didn't even say anything in that situation. How could I have been in the wrong in that situation when I didn't even say anything? But the God who reads all thoughts and all motives and knows all things allowed me to see what my motive was in that situation, and I cried. I was seeing myself the way that God sees me. I confessed every single thing that he brought to my mind. Now, church family, I'm not going to lie to you here, because lying is wrong. (laughs) This was extremely painful. I was sobbing. I had dishonored his character, and I had let him down. The one person who loved me enough to send his son to die for me, I had hurt. A voice began to speak to me very clearly. He told me some very personal things. I told him how sorry I was for hurting him. I was a broken person. Now several times I wanted to leave this space, this room that we were in. I was afraid of what he would show me next. He said to me, Faith, you could go whenever you want to. If this is too painful for you, you can leave. And I said to him, I said, God, you're the one and only God. There is nowhere else for me to go. I would rather be the mercy and the hands of you who love me than of the evil one. I don't know how long this lasted. I'm not going to share with you everything that he said because I don't think it would benefit you. But I will tell you this. He addressed pride, selfishness, etc. This was a time of rebuke, house cleaning, confession, and a total breaking down of self. I said to God at one point, why are you doing this? Am I going to die? That's what came to my mind. Am I going to die here? Are you preparing me to die? I know that you love me and you wouldn't be doing this if you didn't, if you wouldn't be doing this if you didn't want to take the time to help me be right with you. Now, I honestly had no idea that things were not right between God and I. I come to this church every week. I pray and I read my Bible. But let me tell you that Satan is subtle. Self is desperately wicked and deceitful. I had been letting my prayer time and my reading time get shorter. I got distracted with my girls, my work, my life, and other worldly things. And I will tell you some things that he told me. He said to me, time is short. He said, we need to all be free of sin. He told me that he would heal me, but it wasn't because of my prayers. He told me he was going to heal me because of the prayers of a friend. He told me that he had the right to take my life from me or give it back. He didn't cause my sickness, but he allowed it to happen because he wanted my full attention. Now, I promise you, he had my full attention. It is very clear to me. God is not pleased with lukewarm, half-hearted relationship with him. He doesn't take to insincere prayers or repeated ones. I want to tell you the good news. I finally did feel his peace. Joy came over me like I honestly cannot describe to you. I thanked God for healing me. I thanked him for answering the prayers of my friends, and I thanked him for forgiving me even when I didn't deserve his mercy. This peace did not come after, until after moments of confession and brokenness. He showed me, started to show me things. At one point, he showed me a glass. He said, this glass is you. It needed to be cleaned and emptied of self. Then I saw a pitcher with water in it. He says, I'm going to pour my Holy Spirit into this glass until it's overflowing. Once this glass is full, he told me to look through the glass. He says, once once you look through this glass and people look through it, they won't see you anymore. They're going to see me. Now, please know that I am not a special person. I am a big sinner that God showed mercy to. He explained to me that he was going to be doing this same process in the lives of many of his people. He said, any one of you that are willing to submit to him, he would clean up your glass and fill you with his Holy Spirit. He wants to raise up, and I'm using his words here, an army. 
I wrote it down because I didn't want to forget that he said it. He said, I'm raising up an army of clean vessels who will perfectly reflect me. He told me that he had a special work for me to do. And that, at that moment, I thought of Ron. I said, Ron, will Ron be by my side? I asked God that. He said, if Ron is willing and will submit to my leading, and I believe that my husband will. Time is short. It was time to commit to him more fully than I ever have. The next morning, I received a text message from a friend at this church. She said she had been up all night praying for me. I knew when I got that text message, it was her prayers that had been answered for me. And I cannot tell you how grateful that I am that she is a godly person who took the time to pray for me. I called my husband. I said, yeah, I need to talk to you. Please listen to me closely. I'm sold out to God. You cannot say or do anything to convince me differently. I've just sat in his presence. He is full of love and he is full of mercy, but he is a God of justice. Do not be deceived to think he isn't. He will not take sin lightly. If you think things are okay between you and God, they might not be. You do not want to stand before God and have any sin in your heart. He is so powerful. He wants to do big things in the lives of his people. He has the power to heal you physically, and he has the power to heal you spiritually. Now, these antibiotics worked for me. The infectious disease doctor walked into my room Friday morning. I felt such peace when she came into my room. I looked right at her, and I said, are you a Christian? She said, yes. I said, are you an Adventist? She said, yes. I knew she was going to play a part in my healing. I was discharged with a boatload of pills to take for two weeks. Now, I just want to summarize what I've learned. Number one, I had no business making chicken for my family because I was preparing it when I got sick. I don't even eat meat. But God told me, quit trying to please other people. You're, I, he's the only one that I need to work on pleasing. Number two, I need to be more vulnerable and share with other people. We can't keep pretending that everything is okay. We are God's people. Share your struggles with someone, confess your brokenness, and pray for each other. Number three, the prayers of the righteous are very, very powerful. Get right with God so that you can pray for your loved ones, yourself, and those in need. Number four, everyone is in a different place with their journey with God. We may be in different places, and that's between them and God. Pray for them. Do not judge others. Love them. Number five, things that you think aren't a big deal just might be a big deal to him. Don't trust your view of things. Ask God for clarity. And number six, this is important. We don't have time to mess around with sin. The world or anything that keeps you from spending time with God. If you're lukewarm, you need to stop. You need to get sold out for God. I'm on a journey to heaven. I can't look back, slow down, or keep making the mistakes that I was making. I don't have any time for that nonsense. I'm done with worldly things, and I'm 100% sold out to God. He told me that the more that I become like him, some people won't like it but that it would be okay. He said, because some people are going to be drawn to you because you're like me. I've been broken, but I've been healed. I've been emptied of self, and I've been filled with the Holy Spirit. I told God he gets all of me. I want to share his love and mercy with all of the broken people that I meet. All God shares with you is to be shared with others. Don't be selfish with your time, your means, or the truth that's written in God's word. It's to be generously shared with those around you. There's a lot of broken people out there that need you and I to be Christ to them. I'm praying that you will be drawn close to the most.